uh, it's something you can have in your file to back up the fact that uh, you attended this. And then we'd also like to solicit your input ongoing. Uh, this is the first of a series of webinars we're doing each third Thursday at two o'clock, our T5 series. If there are uh, things you would like for us to cover, if there are things that we've missed, if there are ideas that would help you in implementing and supporting uh, PACE projects going forward, we welcome those ideas. So uh, please send those to us as well, and you've got my email address there. So um, if I can get my slides to advance. Okay, so the, uh, the webinar today is, um, as I mentioned, the first of the T5 series. This is the Texas PACE for service providers. So if you're a engineer, a designer, a contractor, uh, this is for you. We'll also have webinars later that will go into the basics of PACE uh, for local governments, for economic development, for a number of different uh, fields that uh, are, are important to supporting PACE throughout the state. But this one's going to be a little more technical. And I'm going to start off here by introducing, I guess, myself uh, and then our other presenter, Keith Reel. My name is Doug Taylor. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for the Texas PACE Authority. I've joined uh, TPA recently after over 20 years with, as, the, as the Director of the State Energy Conservation Office. Uh, prior to public service, I was in the commercial real estate, property appraisal, and tax consulting business. So PACE work sort of ties those two things together. And then Keith Reel, uh, who has been involved in a number of PACE projects, in fact, the very first one as a third party engineer, uh, brings over 30 years of experience working in this field, a uh, number of certifications. In fact, uh, I had to leave about uh, 15 of them off, but he is a PE CEM lead AP and lead AP O, and o plus M <clears throat> in, in addition to many other things. So Keith will uh, be taking the second half of the presentation. So first of all, what is PACE? What is Texas PACE? Well, PACE stands for Property Assessed Clean Energy Financing. You hear the term PACE a lot. And uh, we added financing, or I did, because we kind of left that off of the PACE definition. And that's really what's key. Uh, this is a financing mechanism that provides long-term, low-cost, 100% financing for energy, water, or distributed conservation, or distributed energy projects. In Texas, any commercial or industrial property potentially is eligible to utilize PACE. And in, in, in our definition here in Texas, multifamily includes, um, or at, commercial includes multifamily as well, as long as it's five units or more. So not essentially everything but residential is eligible. And what's key to this is the repayment is secured by a special assessment on the property that's in place over its useful life. And so this provides uh, security for the lender. It provides a uh, longer and constant uh, payment stream that better aligns with the savings and it allows projects to move forward that otherwise might have capital hurdles that prevented them uh, from advancing. So that's pace in a nutshell. And it really is, you hear this term win-win-win a lot, but it really is a win-win-win uh, because of the value it brings to a number of different sectors. Property owners obviously benefit from lower utility bills, from uh, greater energy independence, resilience. Um, these uh, projects can increase the value of the property by replacing mechanical systems, add to the value of the assets. Contractors have an opportunity to participate here. Obviously, they're the ones doing the work uh, in an engineering, er, engine, engineering capacity project implementation, HVAC contractors, MEPs, uh, all of this. Uh, lenders uh, are the ones that are bringing cash to the project and enabling that. At a higher level, the state benefits by 
reducing peak demand during the summer, which uh, has created some challenges and, and actually increased prices as we've seen in the last couple of years. So it helps ensure we have adequate power when we need it. And then from a community standpoint, uh, these projects happen. This is, this is, these are hands-on where the rubber meets the road projects. So uh, communities, local contractors, local lenders, uh, benefit from that, as well as the the value, the property base of the community as a whole, and and improving the value of these assets. So really, it is a win win win. The type of improvements we're talking about that can be funded by Pace uh, fall into the categories of energy or water efficiency or on site energy generation, and these are some examples in the two categories: uh, HVAC systems, lighting, building controls. Um, a variety of things there on the water side, fixtures, uh, alternative water, uh, irrigation systems, you name it. Uh, pretty pretty uh, open in terms of the technology itself that can be financed through PACE. And so why is this model important? Well, if you look at uh, why many projects don't move forward, it's because the owners uh, don't, have the, don't have the budgets or sufficient budget available to invest and make these improvements in their properties. Um, and and uh, so they wind up uh, maybe going to a lender for an equipment loan. And in a conventional scenario, as you see on the left, the repayment for that equipment loan is typically over a fairly short term, maybe no, no more than five years. So for the first five years the pro after the project's completed, you have uh, more debt service than you do utility savings and so you're, from a net operating income perspective, you're, you're upside down. And after that repayment's complete, of course, you then begin realizing the utility savings, but there is that delayed period. With PACE, what we do is we sort of, as you see, lay over that repayment over a longer term, meaning that your net operating income and cash and positive cash flow starts really on day one. And so it better aligns the utility savings of, a, of these longer, uh, longer life assets and projects being financed through PACE with the benefits. That's that's really the key here. And if you look at it from a comparison standpoint, uh, these are three examples. And if you pay attention to really just the bar graph, uh, the, the yellow bar would be self-funded options. So this assumes that an owner has cash, they have budget to make these improvements. And so what happens is they, they, they go negative right away because that, uh, that, that cash is, is now taken uh, for the PACE project or for the efficiency project, not available for other things. Then they begin realizing utility savings benefits right away, but it takes, in this case, almost eight years to, to go cash positive, cash flow positive. In a conventional loan option, uh, again, you go negative for a while because uh, you have that repayment stream typically over about five years then you start going positive. That's the orange bar. And then the blue bar shows pace uh, by comparison. And there you start day one going cash flow positive. And so over, over, a, over an annual basis in this illustration, the net operating income impacts about $30,000 a year. And then um, over its life, almost 300,000. So it generates cash flow immediately. And that's really a, a key to it. In Texas, the pace market is really growing. Uh, the map here, the shaded areas and the dots are the counties and the cities that now offer PACE or where PACE is available. About 60% of the state's population is covered. And uh, the investments to date done through PACE are about $106 million. Uh, just last week, the city of San Antonio enabled PACE and uh, the Texas PACE Authority will be operating uh, that program uh, for the city and uh, our, our website has not even captured that yet. So I added that to the side. So we're excited to be working in San Antonio now, as well as many of the other cities and counties around the state. By the numbers, if you look at the PACE investment, the graph on the left shows that it's been a fairly slow start since PACE was first enabled, but there really has been this inflection point in 2019. So uh, we there was there was many pace projects closed last year is all the years prior, and uh, we 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 expect to see this uptick uh, even in spite of the current conditions with COVID shutdowns. Uh, we think that uh, there could be a temporary blip or you know a uh, uh, a delay with some projects, but 
uh, for the projects that are sound uh, technically and uh, ownership financially, uh, those projects uh, will, will materialize. There just may uh, be a, a gap here until until they do. So strong, it's very strong outlook overall. And most of the projects that have been funded are energy efficiency measures, a fair number of water conservation, and then also distributed generation projects. The breakout, as you see in the pie chart, uh, most of the projects have been in the commercial and retail space, some in a hotel quite a bit, uh, some nonprofit commercial office, uh, industrial only a fraction, and we think that's a big untapped opportunity that we're going to be uh, working on uh, with the industrial energy consumers uh, here uh, in the next uh, you know uh, six to twelve months to sort of put 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 some things together there. So growing a lot. So how it works? Uh, this is kind of a, an illustration. If you're a building owner, you find a contractor, you identify the project, you find a capital provider, and then you apply to the PACE program. Uh, if everything looks good, and we're going to go through that very important part on the technical side here in just a moment, then the owner, the building owner, and the project, uh, we determine they all meet the PACE requirements. Uh, there's a series of, of contracts that go into place, uh, funding that happens, uh, the project gets completed, and then uh, the owner uh, sends installment payments directly back to the funder. This is uh, one difference in Texas. Some states actually add a line item to the property tax bill, uh, which so this becomes a new, essentially a, like a tax assessment. Uh, Texas is a little different because uh, the owner is going to be paying the lender directly, uh, but the assessment mechanism is the same. The application process itself, uh, if you follow this uh, flow chart, uh, these are more details, and here you can see a lot of the technical um, review, the legal review, uh, all the way down to uh, the equipment verification and then uh, issuing the approval certificates. I've circled a couple of things here to highlight, since this is more of a technical crowd on this webinar today, uh, the ITPR is a key function. That's the independent third-party reviewer, and that is required in state law. We're going to go into that in detail. Uh, this is an opportunity if you're an engineer uh, to participate and review projects uh, as they're happening around the state to ensure that they meet all the PACE requirements. Outside of those two circles, uh, any owner can contract or bring in any engineer to help design the project too. And so there's really two opportunities. And we'll go into that more uh, in detail uh, in just a moment. So the technical aspects, how do we know that projects are going to save money? How do we know that the savings will be there to cover debt service? Uh, what we use are technical standards that were uh, drafted a number of years ago, uh, modeled after those that uh, we developed back when I was with the State Energy Conservation Office around our Lone Star program. If you're not familiar with that program, it's for public entities. It's very much like PACE, but for public sector, so city schools, uh, county buildings, public university buildings. Uh, we did over half a billion dollars of funding uh, with Lone Star and it's still active and had a zero default rate That's because every project produced savings. And so when pay started, uh, the idea was let's not reinvent the wheel if something is working well. And so a lot of the PACE technical guidelines follow those that have been used for Lone Star for a number of years. We've also tied in the investor confidence project protocols and then what you'll see is these technical standards are largely based on accepted engineering standards, the IPMVP uh, for MNV, ASHRAE standards, and ASTM guidelines. And if you go to PACE, the PACE, uh, Texas PACE Authority website, under program documents, you'll see that all of those are available there to download. Uh, we have those actually in English and in Spanish. So with that, uh, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Keith. Keith, if you're muted, uh, please unmute yourself and take us through the next uh, set of slides, please. There you go. Can you all hear me, hopefully? I can hear you, Keith. Great. So uh, the process is a lot of, um, you know, I get. And so we're going to kind of go through each of these boxes. Uh, as far as it goes. Um, you first start with you have a project and you need to do an energy analysis to know 
what are you going to save? Um, you know, so what do you have? Um, it could be uh, such that I worked on a building that was from the 60s. So they had incandescent, incandescent lights. And I mean incandescent and, and to uh, LED. So the savings were really big um, on those uh, type of savings. It could also be that it's a fairly new building and you retrofit. So the savings are not going to be big, but as, as big uh, in that case. Uh, you can go on to the next slide. Can you advance, Deb? It got stuck. There we go. Part of the analysis is project and energy water analysis. So you can be energy and energy could be gas as well as electricity. Um, it could be other forms of burning things or something like that. But most times we're talking about electricity when we talk about energy or potentially gas. Uh, water though is another utility and water conservation is important and utility if you save on water, you can save a significant amount of energy, of, of, of dollars on your utility bill. And so we can use those as well. So the water part, if you retrofitted, for example, a toilet um, that may have been an old one, uh, it, it could be in three and a half gallons or more per flush. And the new ones are, you know, 1.28 would be that. There are two ways to really do that analysis. There's fast track, which is a spreadsheet style analysis. Uh, you kind of take the measures. So you may take uh, your water efficiency measures and put them into one. You may take your air conditioning and HVAC and put it in another, lighting in another, and put it all together. But uh, it's, a, it's a simpler analysis. Uh, it still takes time to do, and you need to know what you're doing to come up with some good numbers. Uh, you can also do a full ASHRAE uh, style uh, energy model uh, and there are actually guidelines as far as doing energy models and, and the like uh, programs I think we're on the next slide so on the baseline um, you could have vacant or partially vacant buildings it could be that it's a hotel and it stays a hotel it could be that it's an office building and becomes a hotel um, in one case, uh, we had that, but the model building, model the building using equipment operating hours under the expected conditions. So if the building was built in 1960 and had that kind of vintage, as I mentioned, uh, lighting, uh, that's what your baseline, that type of lighting. Um, and then you would also look, there could be building repositioning. It could be a change in the building use. It could become a hotel. Uh, from an office building it, the other way around. It could be a hotel that becomes an office building. Um, and so the baseline, you, you again, you look at the lighting source and you look at the measures that will be new to the building uh, and you model it, you, uh, you know, code compliant equipment um, or what you're going to use. Um, and your energy savings uh, is going to be, you know, what was there versus what then if you're building the building uh, totally for the most part it's developed and you're gutting it and redoing it um, uh, with the site you have to build that building code compliance so then it becomes the energy savings is your baseline would be code compliance versus uh, your baseline being uh, what was there next So on that, as far as the team goes, you have the contractor, uh, you may have an engineer record, uh, you're probably going to have a developer involved, and those folks are the ones that would complete the audit or energy water analysis. Um, I have also performed those services, those people, um, on several projects, but if I do that, then I cannot be the independent third-party reviewer. And the independent third-party be the one that puts together the analysis that goes to the fox guarding the hen house so that would be 
ethically not right. So you can't have the same person do both jobs. Uh, so one person for the analysis uh, of energy and water savings, the other person then would review that analysis. They can they will have questions probably with the people that put the analysis together, and it's fine that they need to be independent and they need to make you know it's it's making sure that everything uh, two opinions that uh, everything is on on the level. Energy models, um, uh, as we talked about, a little bit more complex. To require uh, an, a building energy model, um, especially in into doing a lot with the air conditioning systems. If you want to take the full um, everything as far as full energy savings, run times, and everything, it takes a full simulation to do that. Uh, potential simulation models are listed here. Uh, there are more. Um, and uh, some of them, um, like eQuest and Doe2, I believe is uh, free along with Energy Plus. Some of the other ones uh, for training carrier uh, may be, uh, you know, you have to buy. So, uh, but most engineers have an idea of how to run these. So if you have, are an engineer, you've probably done some energy models or definitely know some. Next. The baseline uh, required information uh, is 12 to 30 months of utility data, uh, hopefully whether normalized or at least last renovation. That is not always available. So the baseline sometimes may be simulated either with an energy model or with a, uh, to understand exactly how that building uh, is running before the renovation. Um, you're gonna look at your occupancy rate. You're gonna look at how many people are there, the hours of operation, at the current equipment and the performance. You wanna look at the utility rate structures. Um, and you wanna also look at uh, doing a site visit uh, to, with the baseline and pictures out there. Take pictures of the equipment, take pictures of the lighting, take pictures of the things that you're going to change. You don't have to document every single light and every single piece of equipment, but your major pieces should be. So if you're retrofit, I would take pictures of the chillers if you're doing Fit, I would take some representative pictures of the lighting just to document that uh, what is there. Um, other de additional details might be weather and data files just to try and document how you know the weather and data is, where it's located. Those are readily available with ASHRAE. Uh, you may ask load profiles, when's it running, when's it shut off, when's it set back, um, and layout and square footage of the building. Um, you may also lay under the baseline, you may, uh, or under the renovation, you may use the roof to make it a cool roof or white roof. And with that, you know, you would want to take a picture of like the roof. Um, if you are replacing the windows, you may want to take some pictures of the windows. It's just documenting what, making sure you account for it. Um, not every single picture is, you know, you don't have to fully document every square inch, but again, you want to have some representative photos to know what you're dealing with when you visit the sun through everything. Next. So on the case savings, uh, for each measure, you need to have a description. You need to, what is the measure? Um, you know, I'm changing the downlight from a uh, incandescent downlight to an LED uh, light. Uh, you wanna look maybe uh, cost of each major. So you need to know, have an idea if we're doing a chiller change out, how much does it cost to do uh, a chiller change out? Uh, what costs are involved? You want to look at usage. Uh, that could be KW, it could be MMBTU, uh, it could be you know, gallons as far as uh, your water usage. Um, you also need to know your utility with your utility usage. Um, look at your operating hours and your cut sheets and you know, look at, you know, how the equipment is going to re be reused. If you were putting in a system, I will tell you that simulating a building control system uh, would be harder um, with a spreadsheet uh, than uh, if you use some sort of a software to try and understand it. But a building control system, if it had something in place, it's not going to save as much as if maybe it didn't have anything in place. So now you're actually controlling when things are running and off and off. 
a weighted and useful calculation, uh, again, with normalized data and occupancy rates and operating hours. So you want to make sure that your all that data is, you know, realistic um, and, and, and right. Uh, I've had a case where uh, somebody said, well, the old building was on 24 seven. So it was, you know, 8,760 hours a year, uh, but with the control system, be, you know, $2,000 a year. Well, that seems like a pretty uh, sharp uh, change in, in uh, the hours of usage. So you wanna make sure that you really look at that and that it's realistic. Most, most buildings are gonna run, you know, three to 4,000 hours at least a year. Um, so uh, just know that. Next. All right, it's, it's coming up. The project and equipment useful life. Um, the assessment period cannot exceed the useful life. So um, if you have, say, uh, a rooftop, uh, rooftop uh, as far as how long it will last is about 15 years. Um, some equipment may last slightly longer if you're not using them a lot, but typically around 15 years is what ash would say. ASHRAE has some tables dealing with expected lifetimes. If you have a chiller though, a chiller would last 30 years. So uh, when we say the assessment, we're talking about how long is the loan. So we see loans somewhere between the 15 to 25, but even up to 30 years in length. Um, look at the useful life. Again, it's a weighted average based on the cost. The engineer or contractor calculation and provides the backup as to what the equipment is and useful life. And then it's validated by the ITPR. The ITPR may have questions just to make sure that they understand. Uh, if you had a, it's only, you know, the equipment's only used um, periodically. So uh, it could be that uh, it will last longer than 15 years for a stake of rooftop. The savings calculation method, basically is pretty simple. You have your baseline case, you know what your projected use or savings are going to be, uh, and you can get the projected use, or you know what your projected use after it is installed, and then you can get your savings. So it's it's solved for X is really what you're doing. Um, I've seen people do it two different ways, basically like it is presented, that you have your baseline minus your projected savings, but I've also seen people establish a baseline, get the savings, and then they get their projected use. So uh, it can be, Either way, uh, again, you want to make sure that you have somebody that's done this kind of work, so that it's realistic, uh, and expectations, you know, hopefully will be meted, met or exceeded. Um, and everything has to be open book. So the ITPR is going to dig through it, and then on top of that, the uh, you know our calculations are done by an engineer. The they're reviewed by an ITPR. It is submitted to the Texas Pace Authority (TPA), and they review it again. So uh, Ever, it is getting looked at and, and somewhat scrutinized to make sure that the savings are there. Next. So what can be counted? Um, it has to have basically a cash benefit. So again, you can reduce your energy or your water consumption. Again, that could be electricity, could be gas, uh, your water usage. If uh, you're doing something, um, then you know that could be the case. Uh, had a project that they put solar on the project, so there is value in produced energy on site. It could be wind production, it could be CHP, um, and everything like that. It could also be that you have tax savings uh, if there's a tax liability, and there are a lot of things have rebates uh, that you can get. Uh, operational is uh, some, um, and but you can definitely get operational and maintenance savings. So if you are retrofitting fluorescent fixture or an LED fixture, LED lamps last times 10 times as long as a fluorescent. So a fluorescent fixture, you may have to change the lamp every year, whereas an LED would last seven, 10 years potentially. So and having to buy the lamps and the labor to install them as well. Uh, so you have to justify it and you have to, you know, spell out how that savings was arrived at. Your savings at purchases um, is, is 
it's limited, uh, but it can't really drive the, uh, the savings to investment ratio. But um, it can help, you know, as far as the, the purchase. So any savings on interest. Uh, so if you were able to borrow the money and you couldn't get as good an interest rate, you would be saving on interest. Uh, not, the other thing that's not really allowed or not allowed is staff time or avoided cost of capital. And when I say staff time, um, you, you can't say, well, I could fire a guy because now, um, maybe for a control system or something like that. Um, typically, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about really what is the savings on the utilities in consumption um, and what we talked about here, potentially operations and maintenance, tax savings, things like that. Next. When you get the project, the, um, the ITPR would fill out in this standard format, the utility cost reduction measure summary. Uh, some people might see it as an energy cost, kind of the same thing. So UCRM, ECM could be potentially interchangeably used, but we call it utility cost reduction measure summary. You would list out each measure independent would segment uh, if you had uh, an air conditioning upgrade, that would be on one line, uh, and lighting upgrade might will be on the other. And then if you retrofitted your toilets and had a water saving, yet another uh, utility, utility cost reduction measure. Uh, you, solar would be a potential for another one. Uh, so you list them out individually, so they're easy enough to look at. Uh, don't lump them all together. Next. And, and that form also is available online uh, for you to download and it so, will be filled out. You use that form. You can go on to the next one, Doug. The savings to investment ratio, you'll hear uh, sir uh, a lot and so it I'm not sure how I got muted. Um, sorry about that. So on the savings to invest, uh, the savings is the total energy or water uh, savings over the life of the project, uh, the total amount of assessment, including uh, the financing amounts so and investment. Uh, an example would be the HVAC improvements. So the project costs for the HVAC and lighting improvements, including financing costs, so let's say it's a million, Project savings over 20 years uh, would be potentially one. In so that would give you a savings to investment ratio or SIR of 1.5. So we can move on to the next one. I think we're always having fun with side slides here some. So I apologize for that. As far as the ITPR or independent third party review, um, the are required by law to be reviewed by an independent third party reviewer or ITPR. That review has two parts. Before uh, you review the baseline savings uh, projections and uh, again, I suggest taking photos before um, and maybe even taking, so if you had a bunch of rooftop units on a roof, get up on the roof, take some pictures just of the whole roof. Um, you may want to take some pictures of units, um, uh, but, you know, you, you need to have uh, some documentation to, you know, see what exactly was there. After the project has been completed, uh, you need to verify that everything 
and operated as intended. So you need to have site uh, photos and you, uh, you need to make sure that, you know, you go out there, everything's installed as it was planned. So if they said they were gonna put uh, two by four LED fixtures in and you go out and it's two by four fluorescent fixtures in, well, they didn't put in what they do. So that would, that would uh, be not a good situation. But in most cases you'll see, they'll put in two by four LED fixtures. So again, after you would take some pictures just to prove that everything was installed as uh, it was asked for. So if you had say a hundred LED two, up, two by four lights, you may just take a picture of one or if there's a big area in it, take a view, you know, a picture of the whole area just to show that, you know, everything has been installed. Um, you should walk the site and look at uh, all the site though and make sure that everything has. But as far as documenting, again, every square inch, you don't have to do that. You don't have to document every single light fixture. You can look and in general, you'll see, you know, you'll notice if something wasn't done. LED. Um, same thing with air conditioning, same thing with water. So you're going to go into toilets and make sure that the toilets are retrofitted and things like that. So, um, can move on to the next slide. It's taken a minute to do that. So the the before the savings review, we kind of that um, is is really just go to the site, take a look at it, make yourself familiar with the project, make sure that everything. Uh, the, and, and the other thing I find is sometimes when I go, they say, "Oh, we're just doing a lighting retrofit." And some other stuff and so they only want to think that there's lighting but i may go to a project and realize hey they're changing out the toilets you can you can you're saving money by changing out the toilets we could that as well and uh so you oftentimes you're educating people as to what actually can be included in the pace process you may find that they put solar on the roof and they didn't realize that solar could be in or some kind of chp so uh, make sure when you're before savings review, you actually may be helping the owner out a lot more to, that they uh, didn't realize that, hey, just the lighting and count the, uh, the HVAC or the solar or a bunch of other things. So, Go on to the next slide. It's coming. So the before review cover components, as far as what is gonna get the Texas Pace Authority or TPA, uh, you'll have a cover later, uh, making, you know, kind of going through the project, a little bit, you know, about what the project is, when you visited, uh, maybe um, what your savings, you know, are be baseline, um, what your savings are, and, and just a few key numbers to make sure that you've visited the project. You're gonna have, actually there is a form online, it's a project verification certificate sealed by an engineer um, and that certificate is again available online uh, it's just two pages it's pretty simple uh, you will be your initial have your initial uh, uh, savings which is the UCRM worksheet that we talked about um, also site visit photos um, I normally include that either with the cover letter or with the signed project verification server again just a couple you know just a few photos not every single light but maybe some representative photos showing what the lighting is currently and what the air conditioning is currently um, and if you have a report uh, that would be also something that would go part of the project verification certificate um, you need to make sure that the reviewer will certify that they meet the qualifications uh, they do not have a conflict of interest uh, qualifications just by the way uh, I'm a certified energy manager through AWE. Uh, ASHRAE also has some certifications. There's several uh, as well as being a professional engineer. Um, should have a history of doing this type of work as far as reviewing energy and utility savings. Uh, so uh, you want to make sure that it's that. Again, no conflict of interest. Uh, the ITPR shouldn't be uh, directly employed by the developer, the contractor, uh, the other engineer. This should be, you know, an arm's length uh, from it to make sure that uh, there's no conflict of interest. Uh, again, they need to review the savings uh, and the baseline. 
and review the useful life of the project. And again, the project is a project uh, as far as per the PACE guidelines. Again, qualifications, it's Texas PE with energy or water experience and one of the following. Again, certified energy manager seems to be a pretty popular one, uh, but it could be uh, under ASHRAE, there's a building energy assessment professional. I know a lot of people do that, or it could be some kind of a commissioning uh, uh, association, uh, potentially with the investor confidence project. Um, again, five years of relevant project experience in energy and water efficiency uh, is, is asked for. It's popping around, there we go. Conflict of interest. Again, there must be an arm's length relationship between the reviewer and the party that prepared the savings report. Again, it goes back, I always say the fox. So you wanna make sure that, uh, you know, it's somebody that actually is reviewing it, um, doesn't, isn't paid by whoever prepared it uh, directly. Um, so that there is a way uh, that uh, everything works. Again, statement uh, is right below. Again, not, no financial interest, no ownership in the project, things like that. Um, and your family, your, your company uh, doesn't have any financial interest as well. And wants to make sure that it's an independent third party review. Next. The review of savings and analysis and project useful life. Again, you want to with photos uh, and you review the baseline analysis and the projected use scenario along with the savings. So you want to make sure, uh, you know, if somebody says lighting will save 95% utility bill. Well, what's the existing baseline? Is it just uh, you know a warehouse with lighting and that's the only thing that's in it? Um, then I'd kind of doubt that it would be 95%, but you want to make sure you want to look at it. It could be uh, in that case. If there's no air conditioning or other loads, more than likely there's going to be something that isn't right. Uh, ITR, ITPR will also conclude that the ut reductions in utility realistic and reasonable so you again you want you know if i looked at somebody and they said hey they can save 95 percent of my electric bill that right away says mm, i'm pretty much doubtful that you're going to save 90 but take a look at it show me and and they need to show the itpr all the calculations and how they got there um, i did have some projects where the calculations they put them together using rules of um and i basically asked them to go back and try again, they needed to actually use some more concrete calculation methods, not just a rule of thumb. Uh, so, uh, and they did, uh, and we all figured out. Uh, the period of the assessment uh, does not exceed the useful life of the project, or basically the loan uh, length does not exceed the useful life of the project. So if you did conditioning retrofit and you wanted a 30 year note, but the DX equipment only asked 15 years, um, that could be an issue. Uh, the project is a qualified project. Uh, we'll certify it is qualified under the PACE Act. It's a permanent improvement fixed to real property. Uh, I actually had a project a hotel. They were actually retrofitting all the refrigerators in the rooms, two-star refrigerators, which is a good thing. Uh, that did actually save money. However, they're not permanently affixed in the property. Now, you would say, well, it's a hotel we're you know, we're going to, uh, but they are not permanently affixed. So um, if it's an appliance, it probably isn't. Um, now, if it was something you could say, well, is it bolted to the wall? And I will tell you that most hotel rooms are bolted in one way or another. It, it, it really kind of depends a little bit. Uh, there's a little leeway. I think there a question there, but um, it would be really questionable to count that as a permanent it also needs to be intended to decrease water or energy consumption or demand. So uh, it can include a product device or uh, interacting group of products or devices uh, on a customer side of the meter. It's energy technology to generate electricity, provide thermal energy, or regulate temperatures. So we talk about uh, combined heat and power, CHP as well, as being something that could be used. Next. Then after your review and you submit all the forms, uh, it goes through TPA, goes through that, they would usually close on it. Uh, project construction uh, occurs. Sometimes the project construction while the review is going on, because uh, maybe the owner had already started something. Uh, but in most cases, it's, you know, the project construction is after you close, you had the money. And so um, you, you've moved to 
and the project gets executed. Next. And as far as the process goes, um, installation, some of the same things that we mentioned before. You're gonna visit the site. Um, you're going to make sure you take some photos uh, to verify lighting was retrofitted, if that was uh, one of the projects, uh, air conditioning, if solar was put on. You wanna take pictures documenting everything. And you have to do a signed statement of compliance uh, and a cover letter and report. Again, saying I visited such a day, um, you will probably submit some photos just to prove, you know, uh, what was done, what it looks like. And uh, you would also, uh, again, it's verifying that the, the, the uh, you know, if the air conditioning was going to be renovated, that it was renovated and it was renovated with the equipment that they said. So if they said that it was going to be a 13 sear rooftop, you go up on the roof and it's a 13. So that they actually complied with what they said they would do. If the lighting was retrofitted and they said they were going to do LED, that you'd go out and make sure that they did LED. And so you sign that they state everything uh, that was assumed for savings and uh, and you submit that statement of compliance as well as a cover letter and any report. Next. And again, with the site visit statement of compliance, you the you know that the ITPR again has to meet qualifications, no conflict. Just uh, performed a site visit with photos, and improvement from the project have been completed or and operated as intended. These uh, that we have are a couple projects I worked on. Uh, we'll talk through those. Uh, the first project actually in Texas uh, was uh, the Congregation Beth Israel. Um, actually, this is a case downloaded. Some of you may have already done that. It's on the uh, PACE website, uh, Texas PACE Authority website. Um, so they did some HVAC, some uh, controls, and some window film. Um, these were about $11,000. The assessment was, uh, you know, a little shy of half a million, and it saved 20% uh, annually. Uh, so this was a nice way for them to upgrade their chill uh, and do a few of the upgrades uh, with their controls and window film um, and put money back in their pocket. So it, it, it really worked well for them and continues to this day. Next. Next one's a little bit more involved. This was actually in Houston. Um, it was 1225 North as you're driving the north loop, it's right there on the loop, so you can see it. Um, they actually did uh, air conditioning uh, chillers, um, and we're doing some controls as well as LED lighting. Um, they actually, from center point, had some utility incentives on the chillers. Um, the chillers were the original from the building, so they were actually uh, past what their useful life was, uh, and uh, they were spending quite a bit of money keeping them cleaned and working, uh, and they were not extremely reliable as well. So uh, they were needing to do a chiller change out as, uh, with this. Um, the assessment total was uh, 1.3 million, as mentioned. The, uh, it was saving about 38% annually. Um, and so this was a important, an important part of them as far as filling up the building and uh, optimize return on investment for purchasing the building. So. Um, by those utility savings, that was a, a really, really good thing. So, uh, interesting project. Um, again, still working, all the LED lighting. Um, some little stories about the LED. Uh, some of the folks, uh, when you retrofit for LED, some of the folks uh, weren't real fond. The lighting was a little different um, than what they had before. Um, and sometimes people just be aware that some things like that can happen. And I think, Dub, it goes back to you. Yeah, thanks, Keith. Uh, get us past our slide lockup again real quick, and then we'll wrap up. <clears throat> okay, so again, as I said at the outset, uh, uh, PACE is really a win-win-win for a number of parties involved, the property owners, uh, lower utility bills, greater efficiency, increases in comfort, the thing Keith just mentioned about lighting retrofits, which is important, is when you are moving to a new technology, it's important uh, for the occupants of the building 
to understand what you've done, what's happened. It may, it may be slightly different than what they're used to. In the case of LED, uh, it may be brighter, a different uh, color rendering of light. Uh, if you do a one-to-one -one change out, you may wind up with a situation where you have too much lighting. And so you have to take that into account when the project is designed. Uh, contractors, uh, totally relying on contractors to do this work. And so we need you to understand uh, these opportunities, uh, the basic mechanics of pace, and how to engage. Lenders providing capital, the state benefits, the people in the state benefit will all benefit. Uh, if uh, we avoid brownouts during uh, periods of peak summer demand for air conditioning, and then a great opportunity for communities. In fact, some of the uh, PACE programs at the community level were spawned by an individual project that uh, maybe a property owner wanted to pursue, but there wasn't yet a PACE program. And so in those cases, uh, in, in parts of the state where there's not yet PACE, uh, a program can help uh, create that program that uh, could then uh, benefit more than just that first project. So our group, the Texas PACE Authority, we sort of sit in the middle. We're the conduit, we're the implementers and supporters. The local governments themselves, they create the PACE programs. The property owners, uh, they participate. Capital providers uh, bring their funding. Service providers like many of you on the call, the webinar today are doing the work. So we sit in the middle and, and, and help make all of this work together. Some resources we have, there's the website, uh, Texas PACE Authority. Uh, the, the program guide and technical standards that I mentioned earlier in the presentation are all there. Uh, that's all downloadable. Uh, there's a number of FAQs, case studies. Uh, it's a fairly easy to navigate website, we think. Drop down menus, and we tend to uh, put a lot of information there uh, all the time, so keep checking back. As far as events and training, uh, we, we intend to have uh, this uh, similar webinar which we're calling T5, uh, every, uh, this is the Texas Pace Authority's uh, third, two, third Thursday at two uh, training, and uh, we'll have a different topic each month. Um, we started off with technical, uh, next month we'll be focused on, uh, on a training for lenders and capital providers. So if you have uh, lenders, uh, lo local banks, local lenders you're working with, you might direct them toward that. Uh, other training and events uh, will be posted there as well. And then the Texas State Energy Conservation Office has a page on PACE uh, itself, uh, its origins, enabling, enabled through state legislation, implemented at the local level, and now generating an, a lot of projects statewide. So with that, uh, thank you all for attending, uh, and thank you for accommodating our uh, Google Meet platform. Uh, it's something that is, uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, not entirely designed for webinar use, but we sort of adapted to, to make it work today. Uh, and uh, any questions you have as we're at the end of our time, please send them. I'll leave this screen up. Please send me an email, dub at texaspaceauthority.org. We will post the questions. We will anonymize the question, the, whoever submitted the question, uh, and uh, but we'll post the questions and the answers. And then also, if uh, you registered for this webinar, uh, today, uh, you'll receive those questions and answers, a link to them. Uh, you'll also receive a PDH certificate, uh, so you can use that to document that you spent an hour with us this afternoon and fulfill part of your professional education requirements. And then we'll also send you a survey where we'll ask, uh, you know, what we could do more, what we could do differently to help, uh, help support you as PACE is implemented uh, throughout the state. So with that, we're a minute over. Uh, we start a little bit late, but we appreciate everyone's time this afternoon. And uh, please do submit questions and please do check the Texas Pace Authority's website uh, for future training opportunities. Thank you very much.